So how does it feel to be a star? It's never gonna last. Let's just enjoy it while we can. First sleeping arrangements, Kate. All of this is gone. I just hope you realise you're choosing a life of being alone forever. Don't you want to just sing without this ridiculous paraphernalia? People don't pay to see Reg White. They pay to see Elton John. Sorry. Penning. Um, let me just start off by say, by singing, excuse the pun, <laughs> your praises. Taryn, I feel like I've known you for a couple of years. We yeah, met at Sing. Yeah, did. And that's one of the reasons you're in this movie. <laughs> yeah, it probably didn't hurt. And I got to tell you right now, fantastic job, my thank friend. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank um, you. Tell me about the first time you met your now new best friend, Elton John. Uh, the first time I met him, we were recording, we were filming rather, the... Um, the wedding scene from the second Kingsman movie, and Elton is playing organ at the top of the at the top of the church after we've saved the world, and um, which is something we do, and uh, and he he called me up to go and meet him, and um, and I've said this before, but he said, um, you know, if I were five years younger, it would be me that you were marrying now, which was quite a line, and. Um, and, but it's it was it was sort of so it's so who he is, he's so cheeky and naughty and irreverent. But I've I've felt very looked after by him and very invested in by him, and, uh, not just in relation to our movie. So I, I'm very grateful to him. What does it mean for you to play? A, he really is a living legend, a person like this. It's the greatest honor of my life, without that. I um, I love the process. Aside from the privilege of playing someone so iconic and so culturally important. Um, the team of people who've made this movie are astounding, professional, talented people. And it, it is the distilled, crystallized hard work that everyone has put in. And, um, and I'm so proud to be the man at the center of it. You uh, also sing in this movie, which I do. is just Awesome, because you not only act, you you say you're taking double duty with this. Mm. Did you feel the pressure? These are classic songs that you're performing. Absolutely, there is pressure, but pressure is only good if you can overcome it. If you allow it to rule you, it can really it can really cripple your performance. And um, particularly when it comes to singing, singing is about relaxation and freedom. So whilst there is a lot of pressure, there does come a point where you have to kind of put it in a box and say, okay, I'm gonna forget about that now. Um, and that's what I did. What is your favorite Elton John song? My favorite Elton John, I keep getting in trouble for saying this because it's not in the movie, but my favorite Elton John song is Someone Save My Life Tonight from Captain Fantastic and the Brown Dirt Cowboy. Go get it on Apple Music, have a listen, that's beautiful. I'm not the first because I'm sure people have been telling you this. This movie's awesome. <laughs> um, okay. I Thank am you. a huge Elton John fan. Oh, great. Many are. Yeah. But you really did this movie justice and you did a great job. So really kudos it. to you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. It means a lot. It's a raw look at his life during yeah. this period, a pivotal point of his life. Mm. When you met with Elton, did mm. he? it looks like he, at least that's how it came off for me, mm. that he just said, here's my story, go with it. That's, that is what happened. I mean, I went for this lunch with him, which was an extraordinary lunch. And, you know, they were like, look, Elton's got shows. He's in Vegas. Go Vegas, see him, sit down for some lunch go and see how you, you get on. I was like, great. So I had all these questions and then, you know, I'm like, okay, I've got an hour at lunch with Elton. I'm gonna, you know, he's got shows. And so I go to Vegas and we sit down and the first thing he says, is, ask me anything. Nothing's out of bounds. What do you want to know? And so I'm like, great. And there's some like edgy stuff that I've got to get into. So I hear mom and dad and yeah. granny and you know, yeah. the, the, the stuff. And then I get to the more sort of thing and he's like, oh, there was this great moment when. And I was, cause I asked him about something quite gnarly, you know, and he was like, Ah, no, let me tell you about that. And it was like this really funny story about something that was quite, you know, sort of sad and, and lonely. You know, addiction can be a, a lonely place. It's dark. and But he, it's obviously he's a long way through that. And he sort of revealed something. I was like, OK, so it, it, everything's OK. You know, we can... We can go to these places, and this is something I talked to the actors about, to Taron about, and Taron knows him really well. And, yeah. and, and that lunch was ended up being four hours long. So he's completely open and generous about it and wanted it to be everything that I wanted it to be. What did he order for lunch? It went in my notes. <laughs> but I'm just, when you were talking about going to, I'm thinking, wow, how cool would it be to go to lunch with Elton John? Do you remember what he ordered? He ordered a bunless burger. He had a, he had a burger, but it was in two lettuce leaves. 
<laughs> very, very uninspiring. Very, I suppose, average, really, very, very average. Very maybe average. a Diet Coke or something like that. That's because I was like, oh yeah, no, that's a cool. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have one of those. That sounds kind of fun. The music, I think, plays another character in this film. Yeah. How did you decide what songs to use, and how did you see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's an embarrassment of riches there. You, you know, uh, um, look, if it if it informed the characters at that time, and it, it drove the narrative. If it gave us part of the story that I couldn't write. Or, or wasn't written into a whole section of the film with scenes of, you know, Bernie Taupin coming to work and saying, you know, you really got to clean yourself up, Elton. And Elton saying, no! And there's all this melodramatic kind of heavy writing that's really hard stuff to write. But when you've got a song where someone just sits there and, and sings, when are you going to come down? When are you going to land? To this incredible backdrop of this incredible music, um, you know you, you've got something really quite unique and special. And so I grabbed all of those opportunities with both hands. So good to see you again, my you friend. You too. Always, always, always. Um, I always say, how's dad? Yes. <laughs> how's dad going? Everything. Oh, he's got a new movie out. Yes. Pavarotti. Yes, yes, Pavarotti documentary that is really exciting. And you saw I it. I saw it. It's beautiful. And you know what? This is gorgeous. Oh, this is brilliant. You. I love seeing you in this role. You do everything oh, because you are one of the nicest people oh. that we have the opportunity to talk with. Oh, and you. but you're playing somebody that's not so nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's it was. She had a very toxic relationship with Elton John, um, Elton John's mother, and um, and I actually, when I first read the script, I loved the script, but I had a lot of questions. I I, I called Dexter and I spoke with him for over two hours um, because I kind of assumed that this was being told just from Elton's perspective or just from kind of, you know, the people who love Elton's perspective. And and I and I straight up was like, I, I feel like you guys are, are vilifying this woman and, and I don't want to vilify another mother. Like, that's not cool. Um, and so what I did was I reached out confidentially to a lot of people who were not involved in this production and spoke with them and over and over and over again, uh, what I heard was actually it was worse. Uh, it was not oh, good. good. And and I think that there was a moment when I called a friend who was a psychiatrist and I was like, what was this? You know, what did she have? There was something mentally not okay with her because um, it's th this is not normal to be that way towards your son. Has Elton... What did he, has he said anything to you about? I did not talk to Elton. I, Elton had written a lot. He had his diaries and journals and his autobiography that only Taryn had read. Okay. Um, and there was a lot of information in there. Um, I had, of course, you know, having spoken to so many people, I had a picture of, of what was going on. And, um, uh, and so, you know, Taryn was an invaluable resource, but, um, you know, I, I don't think Elton wants to say bad things about his mom. And who would, even yeah. if it was that bad? Yeah, exactly. We'll close with this. What is your favorite Elton John song? My favorite Elton John song is I'm Still Standing. And it is because of the movie Sing. My daughter sings that song constantly from that movie. And I had no idea that it was Taryn who did it. I didn't know until recently. Like and that's a how Elton found ago. out about him to do this particular film. Isn't that crazy? It's wild. Um, so we'll make moms look good in this interview. That's my mom's favorite song too. Really? Yeah, oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> it's, you know, it's like very encouraging. It's a very empowering song. And when you see the movie, you'll know what we're talking about. Yes. Uh, nice to meet you. Nice to um, meet you. I walked in the room and said, how was Can?" And you said it was? Pretty epic. Pretty epic. The reason I open with that is because what is it like to sit there Watch this amazing film, look over, and there's Elton, his family, Bernie, is watching the movie with you all. What was that like? Uh, pretty special, um, particularly because, you know, Elton was so upset at the end of the film, um, and that was kind of tears of, of joy, I think, and that was kind of something that I'm not going to forget. How did this role find find its way to you? Um, I, I got the script through and read it and was kind of blown away by how strong it was conceptually and the abstract moments that happened within it and the storytelling through the music. And then I went to meet Dexter for lunch to talk about it and he played me Taron singing Rocket Man. And I listened to it and I just heard it. I heard it anew. I heard it for the first time again and, uh, and went, right, this is going to be pretty special. I, I want to be involved in it. You play a pivotal part of Elton's John's life. What was it like to play somebody still living? Mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, to do it right? What did you What did you research? How did you get ready for that portrayal? It's a very hard one to research because there's not a lot of interviews. I can't go on YouTube and find a bunch of interviews of him because the nature of his job and who he is, he was always in the shadows and in the background. So I had to rely on talking to people who'd worked for him or people that knew him or friends of his to kind of pull out as many stories as I could about this man and, and try and piece together a character. Do you know, is he aware of the film or is he aware of your portrayal? Um, I don't know. I think he, he definitely knows that I'm in the film, uh, but I've not had any contact with him, so I don't know. No, but I'm just curious, like if he said, I, I was researching that and nothing, so I figured the guy who played him maybe probably had heard something. Well, John, if you're watching, there you go. <laughs> um, you and Taryn, how did you uh, approach these roles from day one? I know your Dexter, your director, was involved with that, but what was important for you and Taryn? Because it's it's very close, intimate friendship. Mm -hmm. um, what was important was capturing the fact that, you know, despite where the relationship ends up, it started off in a place of love, actually. It's a love story. Um, John Reed and Elton John were together for five years before he started being his manager. So, you know, there's a five-year relationship there, which was, you know, um, you know, the first the first time Elton had had a, a proper relationship like that. Your director, though, what did he did he say? You guys, this is where I want to take this. No, it was a collaboration between the three of us. We'd work out where they were at each each point in the scenes. Each and and because we spanned so many years, you know, you go from, you know, kind of like they're like two teenagers almost at the start of how they're kind of trying to interact and, and posture in front of each other to at the end when it's a much more kind of negative, um, nasty relationship.